Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for coming here. So um, what we're going to talk about is basically hackerspace design, uh, how to create a community around a hackerspace and a community in a hackerspace. And uh, I find it very interesting because uh, I've seen that there are um, a lot of differences between the different hackerspaces. I have some people here from uh, Dutch hackerspaces. Uh, in the Dutch hackerspaces, it is uh, custom that there is a sort of a hierarchical structure of a board who, who lead the hackerspace in a way. And then we have uh, uh, Mitch, for example, who, who, who was involved in the, in the founding of Noisebridge, which is a hackerspace uh, which operates on a completely um, a consensus model, which is much more towards anarchy, uh, very interesting. And I'm not sure, uh, what's your name and uh, and your hackerspace, how, how does it work? Yeah, so hi, my name is David from uh, the CHT hackerspace on totalism.org. And it's uh, hackbase, so that means it's a hackerspace that uh, people can also live it. Live it. Yes. And then we have uh, Hans. Hi, hi, Merlin. Um, I'm a founder of Hackerspace Brussels and Hackerspace Kent. I'm not so active anymore, but I do have some war stories uh, to tell. Um, the first time I, I heard it was like with the Hackerspace patterns, which was like, I think, in a CCC conference like 10 years ago. And that basically started our Hackerspace. So we followed the instructions very, very carefully. And we still failed uh, at some point. <laughs> we, we succeeded at other points, but it was uh, a rocky ride. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so my name is Merlin. I'm, I'm now part of the board of Hackerspace Gant, which is the hackerspace that Hans initially founded. Um, and in our hackerspace, we have created the Hackerspace Blueprint, which is uh, basically a living document that we've been working on for the past six years that explain how our hackerspace works in a very accessible little booklet. So we can just give it to newcomers um, and specifically, um, I'm also really interested in giving it to other hackerspaces and to other organizations in order to help them solve the problems in their community. Um, to the right of me is uh, Bookworm. Hi, welcome. Oh, um, thanks for being here. <laughs> so you told me that you are the the <laughs> that you are part of the board. Yes, of I'm Dutch part hackerspace. of the board of. Uh, uh, we're now one year. Uh, we have a physical space in Eindhoven from Hackalot. We were mm. pretty new. We uh, were mainly based on a few other Dutch hackerspaces. We, there's not a big over, uh, overarching Dutch hacker scene that uh, overpowers it. So we have to find some things out ourselves. Yeah. Some things change. Because yeah. Dutch hackerspaces are all kind of the same, but different things work in different places. And that's one of the hardest things about it, to just tell to other people, things that work for us doesn't work at all for other spaces, or for larger yes. spaces, or for yes. older spaces. And that's one of the, yeah. the hard things. Uh, how would you describe the, the system in your hackerspace? What does the board do, for example? In my hackerspace, the board is uh, a lot of the legal stuff. You have to be a foundation, you have to uh, pay the rent, and that kind of stuff is part of the board. The board yes. is also trying to keep the space livable. Uh, the longer we exist, the more people, uh, the, the more members will take part in that. They, they will clean, they will uh, provide tools. Some things just appear in the space and that's awesome. If there you come there and there's a, a new saw that's better than the old one, that is yes. awesome. And the older we get, the more that happens. You sometimes have to maintain it because nobody throws stuff out. And that's one of the things that the board, board does. And there's nobody who really starts to do the laundry, so somebody from the board does that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing that happens, events, that kind of stuff, it's all member-based. So they do that. Yeah. And if they need help, if they need money, they go to the board. Yeah. Okay, um, next to Bookworm, what is your name? My name is Polly Floyd. I am uh, a current board member and current secretary of the hackerspace Bitler in Amersfoort, Netherlands. Um, yeah, Bitler is... Um, Bitler has been around for quite some time, I think since 2011. Uh, I have not been with Bitler since the, the early days, um, but I have kind of seen it grow. Because Bitler's founding story is somewhat different from a usual hackerspace. In the Netherlands, there is a massive scarcity of space. And um, 
I have been, uh, I've seen other hacker spaces just crumble and suffer from not being able to find an, an, a good space. And in the Netherlands, it's even more extreme because if, if there's a vacant building, you can't just leave it up standing. It has to be knocked down for something else. Um, and Bitler found another, another group, uh, like a youth club. It's called the Young Onderzoekers, the Young Researchers, and bootstrapped by using a kind of time-sharing construction uh, with them. And we're currently still together and uh, growing ever more. That's very interesting. So, Mitch, um, tell us about um, your your vision in in how how a hacker space works. What what a how a good hack how you can create a good hacker space. Well, each hacker space is uh, created by an in, um, unique group of people, so each hacker space is going to be unique. There's no one best way to do it. The hacker space design patterns were called design patterns rather than rules because there's no like right way to do it. There's definitely lots of wrong ways to do it, but the wrong way to do things is something that doesn't work. And just because things have worked at some places and other things didn't work at some places doesn't mean they'll work or not work for your space. But it's important to learn from the experiences of other hacker spaces and the German hackers who put together the design patterns did a great job of research for all the patterns that had existed up till then. So that's a fantastic document to read for anyone who wants to start uh, a hackerspace or really any kind of community. It's really a fantastic document. And that was in 2007. There's yes. a lot of uh, uh, experience, collective experience that's gone on since then. And on hackerspaces.org, people have been adding to that as time goes on. So um, yeah, it's really important for the group to, uh, as b before new people come along, to come up with an idea a very clear idea of what they want from their community. And that's the greatest, that's the most important starting point. What do yes. you want? You're going to spend a lot of time at this, and uh, some of it will be super, super fun, some of it won't, but you definitely want to have a vision of what you want for the space you're going to be spending all that time in. Yes, that's true. So, Zeppos, um, mm -hmm. you talked about um, how there are other organizations right now that are like... Um, that are starting to, to get born. Um, but they are actually also looking for organizational structures, for ways to, to organize themselves, to create communities. Well, m my personal experience at first is the, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a frequent flyer at all kinds of hacker spaces, to be clear. You know, yeah. I like to be everywhere in the kitchen and, and to learn from what is happening. My career as well in academic environments everywhere in the kitchen and then I learn about methods, procedures, whatever and, and you have a better feel you know. so by stepping into it then you can only feel it and really describe it the best what I see nowadays is for instance, from my students um, I can organize with them short term, short -term events and then you can call it uh, hack, hack, hack events or whatever but it's mainly related to art, media, technology related stuff so we do uh, an art performance and we take a building, change it in a parking, change the parking in a park and, you know, the, on the edge of being illegal things. Uh, yeah. But it's only for academic and educational use, you know, so if police calls, we can explain. But uh, I, what I noticed is that the way they organize themselves is not so clear, you know, they don't, they don't know really how to organize themselves. And you see more and more people, youngsters, or even really young people nowadays, on the streets calling for climate change and so on and so on and so on. And they are desperately, s certainly in the need for, for more structural support about how to deal with legal aspects, how to deal with financial situations, how to deal with, I don't know what, medical I I situations of riots and so on. It's a tough thing. There is a lot to learn. There are quite some uh, lectures here as well regarding the Hong Kong protests and the methods that they use there. I miss them, but uh, I will certainly gonna <laughs> watch that one. Um, but my experience there is, or my intuition says me like, we have to bring that knowledge and experience out. Because th the more people know about it, how that we as hackerspaces organize our, our stuff, uh, the better that they can learn from and take things yes. from it. Yes. So I, I hope we can do that. Like as, as Mitch said, like we really have like, like all more than a decade of experience in the hackerspace community of all the different kinds of organizations, how to do it. Um, that's that's also the reason why why 
we actually wrote it down in the Hackerspace blueprint. Um, if you're interested, you can go to hackerspace.design to actually read the blueprint. It is uh, an, a small open source booklet that explains um, how our Hackerspace runs. But of course, as Mitch says, like this is specific to our Hackerspace. That is, this is how we solve the problems uh, that we have in Ghent, for example. Um, problems in, in depending on, on in which cities you are or depending on what, what the, the actual goal is. Um, you could need a, a completely different system. Um, one of the interesting things that, that, that I found is that um, interpersonal conflict is, seems to be a very big issue in these kind of communities. Uh, there are, almost everybody has war stories of how interpersonal conflict actually um, took down or almost took down a hacker space. And I was interested if, if anybody has some, some uh, some some good examples of, of how you could actually uh, solve things like that. Yeah, well, uh, noise bridge. I mean, uh, this is true of people. You know, people are always going to have misunderstandings and, um, uh, and sometimes people just won't like each other. There's always going to be interpersonal uh, friction when you have two or more people or sometimes one or more people in a room. And um, so at noise bridge, we, we came up through um, our experience with procedures of how to deal with this. So the first step is to have people work it out amongst themselves. And if that's not working, then they can, and it, sometimes it's more than two people, sometimes it's a group of people, but uh, we have a, our, our website's a wiki, so we have a wiki page of volunteers who are good at mediating and offer the, themselves voluntarily to mediate and so the people involved can look on that list or pick someone else uh, that they all feel good enough about to play the role of mediator. And the role of the mediator is to make sure everyone feels heard and to keep the space uh, safe enough for people so no one's feeling attacked. And also to keep an eye out for patterns um, of uh, people because if one person is uh, problematic in this situation, perhaps there's a pattern that they're problematic in other situations and they need to change their behavior patterns. And so that's something they can keep an eye on and just use their judgment about and then maybe talk to them about that yes. as well. So if necessary, then there's uh, meetings that can be called, but that's only for last resort. Uh, as a last last resort, people can be, uh, there can be, uh, noise bridge is consensus decision making, so we can have a consensus process about whether a person should be kicked out of the space or not. Yes. But that's only after people are given lots of opportunities to change their behaviors. Yes, yes. It's, it's something to be aware of that this kind of problems, they change in magnitude in the uh, amount of people you have. If you have a small group of 10 people, this kind of conflicts are very easily most of the time, resolved. If this group grows, if you go to 20, if you go to 50, if you go to 100, your kind of problems will change. And that's something you need to know in advance and you can see the dynamic change and that's something you might be on the lookout for. Yeah, good point. I think it's also very clever to dedicate that role to certain mediators um, because we see that often this gets, uh, this responsibility gets put onto the board which already has enough of um, time, uh, not of a lot of work on their hands and everybody looks at them like you solve it. And it's not because they're good at, at, le at let's say, accounting and putting up, putting up like notes and, and being okay um, with, with the law and everything that they are good mediators. So it's good that you can have uh, people within your community that um, actively pick up that role, which, has, which normally should have some skills into that because it's not easy. No, and anyone can learn to do that, but uh, some people have a lot more experience with it, and uh, it's good to have a variety of people for it too, because um, a mediator that's good for some group of people or a pair of people might not be a person that a, a, a different set of people are going to feel comfortable with. I also wonder if there is a process to, um, instead of having people go to the mediators when they have a problem themselves, have the mediators actually seek out problems 
because what what we've experienced is that um, when there when interpersonal conflict happens and people themselves are not directly involved in it they just tend to stick their head in the sand and hope it goes away by themselves but that actually makes it worse way worse so <laughs> if if people stick their head in the sand and hope it goes away it will get worse uh, problems do not go away by themselves, they fester underneath the scene and then some little thing that's totally unimportant can make the problem erupt. And if there's a, a few different places where things are ready to erupt, uh, they can all erupt at once and that can be catastrophic to a community. It's funny that you gave the, uh, um, the example of people bringing like let's say a new tool that's better than the previous one. Um, we always had problems with people bringing in too much stuff. We have like hoarders that were spilling over in the space. We had like people not cleaning up after themselves, taking away too much space according to their, to what they should. And they say like, okay, but it's a hacker space, it's free to use. And they have like this, <coughs> this imaginary image of what a hacker space should be that totally fits them perfectly. Just another place to put more of my stuff. And um, then there is no conflict between a person, just between the person and that group. And you, you tell them once, and you tell them twice, and you tell them four or five times, and everybody says it once together, but it's still, uh, the, the penny does not drop in some case. So that, that person has like a specific individual problem that, that he or she needs to work at. And, and it's hard to get that process going. Yeah, uh, specifically about uh, having too much stuff, too much useless stuff in a hacker space. Uh, th there is a pattern about it, the, the vortex of doom pattern, which is basically you dedicate an area in your space to be this, this, this area where if you put things in it and they stay in there for, for example, a week, then they are thrown out. And so if you see something and you think it's useless, you put it in the vortex of doom and anyone else can take it back out so that it isn't thrown away. But if nobody cares mm. enough to actually throw it out, to, to actually get it out of the vortex of doom, then it's automatically thrown out. Within a week? For example. Ah, okay. in, 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 our, in our hacker space, um, we, we have done that, but uh, we often say how long the, the object will stay in the vortex of doom when we put the object in the vortex of doom. All right. Um, and uh, last year, we actually had a very big win for our hacker space because um, for our yearly new line conference we took almost everything out of the space in order to make room for a big party and lecture talks and stuff like that and then we started slowly filling the space back uh, getting the things that we actually needed from the storage room and putting it back in the space but i think it was three or four months after the <laughs> conference <laughs> there was still so much of stuff course. in the storage room <laughs> so we just decided to throw almost everything away and in the end, we, we threw away half a ton of stuff. And it, it really made, made like a creativity flow again in the space because people had, yeah. had, had room again yeah. to start working on yeah. projects, to, to start bringing in um, new 3D printers, for example. And suddenly we had room for that. Yeah, I can imagine. Here. Right. Kev, well, yeah, yeah, introduce you, Kev. Yeah, yeah, uh, I've Sorry. arrived late there. So uh, I'm Kev from the 5th of North Hack Lab in Aberdeen. Um, so I don't know, s speaking on the Vortex of Doom, like we have a similar <laughs> thing, but it's uh, a three weekly. We've got three boxes that rotate every three weeks. So if something goes in the first box, then it goes into the second week. I and mean, if it goes to the end of the third week, then that box gets emptied and put at the beginning. So you That's interesting, yeah. So we end up with this process like that. So you, you have a period of time where you can find these things. Yeah. So that is a very good approach mm -hmm. to implementing this scheme. At Bitler, we have had um, a similar concept, but every individual item was labeled. Yeah. Um, and keeping up with all these labels proved to be too much effort. So we ditched it in favor of just having one cabinet where everything that is inside it is essentially free to grab or throw away. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was um, meetings themselves. Because it's, it's something we've struggled with as a hackerspace ourselves, in that meetings often give a lot of power to, to people with opinions. But we actually want to give power to the people who do things. 
and and a lot of times the people who who talk very loudly on meetings and and who who break down every idea they they they're not always the people who actually go uh, and do stuff and so in our hacker space uh, we just try to have as little meetings as possible as a as a response to that but um, i wonder like how other hacker spaces try to solve this issue well, I guess it's CH3, what we do is that um, the totality of our, our agreement is on, on, on an open document uh, system that everybody can edit whatever they'd like. So um, we could, for example, adopt uh, the manual we produced, but then uh, anybody could make changes to it and that um, instantly becomes some sort of a currently running paradigm. Um, so what it does is basically it it's one way of negotiating uh, um, a common set of, um, let's say, behaviors and even principles, and this is also maybe something we, we could be talking about. Yeah. And so, is, is, it, is it like an, an asynchronous meeting? Or does, does all this collaboration happen with, within a meeting? Um, well, this is like a, a constant meeting, right? So in that sense, it's like a hyper -syn hyper synchronous or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, do you have meetings otherwise, like in-person meetings? Oh yes, of course. I mean, um, there's all sorts of gruppations, and uh, but what one pattern that really works for us is uh, called overviews. So about every three days, we're going to sit down and just kind of go through all the materials that we've produced, all the projects we've that ind independently people have been developing. They kind of report on them, and talk about it with other people. So it's more like a commonized uh, effort. Well, at NoiseBridge, we found um, meetings are super important. That's one of the design patterns, meet every Tuesday, because every day of the, work, the week sucks. You'll never find a time <laughs> that works for everybody, so just do it on Tuesday and get it over with. But yeah. whatever works, um, meeting every week has been really important for us. NoiseBridge is um, a fairly big organization. You don't need to be a member, and people can come and go as they please, um, as long as they follow our one and only one rule, which is be excellent to each other. So um, there's hundreds of people who go by, go through NoiseBridge every week, and everyone's welcome to the weekly Tuesday meeting at NoiseBridge. And um, so that's uh, like this, this, this heartbeat that keeps things going and brings people together. And new people who are welcome, uh, they find out a lot about NoiseBridge that way. They also find out about NoiseBridge from uh, getting greeted at the door and being given a tour if it's their first time. But the meetings really uh, give a feel for the community. And it also is really good for people to come together. They j everyone just knows that once a week, there's a, a space to talk about stuff. And we found uh, rather quickly that we had to make the meetings enjoyable. Otherwise, people yeah. don't want to come. And so it's not a place to hash things out and then make it work. And uh, you know, th those are put offline to a, a special meeting. If there's things that are difficult, we have a committee who volunteers to talk about these things and they can bring it back to the group. And everyone's welcome to go to those, be part of the committee and be part of those meetings. So having the meeting be fun and we have a template on our wiki page and anyone's free to look at the NoiseBridge wiki and copy anything, of course. Everything's open source. Um, but just having that available so that people can give an introduction really short and, um, and then talk about uh, announcements, projects people are working on, people can share, and um, and then it's like, hey, I'm working on this thing, it'd be great to have help, and then people can find help that way. And it's a fantastic way for new people to see what the community is like, and for people who've been part of the community for a while or a long time, uh, just to feel connected. And that feeling of connection is super important for uh, the community. There was a while where um, some new people were uncomfortable with the meetings and the meetings start and there was a sort of experiment to not have meetings and things drifted apart and so meetings started again and things came together again it's it kind of happens automatically when people yeah. get together but like you said if it's a meeting where everyone must be there and you have to hash out these important things then the people who are better at talking uh, tend to prevail and some people who just want to have power over other people yeah. can tend to prevail as well. So having it a fun thing and then taking the important difficult topics offline to another meeting where yeah. it's only people who are into that topic can be there has been one thing that's worked for NoiseBridge.
Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um, one one of the things that we do in order to make meetings more fun and build this community is that we start a meeting with we call it the minute. Basically, everybody who is present on the meeting gets a minute to talk about whatever they want. Um, they're also welcome to pass this on to other people. Um, and we just go around everybody who is present at the meeting. Uh, and you see that it, it's, it's, it's really interesting because a lot of people talk about the projects they're working on or what they did last week. Um, and it, it's, it gets people into the right atmosphere of like, hey, we're here mm -hmm. to work together. We're here to do f fun things mm -hmm. instead of this, this fighting mentality of you, that, you, that a meeting is about fighting. Yeah, we, we, well, we try to do the same thing. We have, uh, we're weekly open and then people are just coming. So that's one evening and night that we are just there. We guarantee we're open and people are just coming and doing fun stuff and talking. And then about every other week, we try to have a meta meeting. And that's like a small meeting with small announcements. Uh, sometimes big, but those go first to the mailing list. Some small d some discussion. We try to keep that time boxed. And then we just go around and everybody talks what it's doing about, what they want to say, what they planning to do or something like that whatever they have to say and then we round it off and then we know what's happening we have a similar scheme at Bitler uh, we also call it the, ma the meta meeting uh, although we do it every month instead of every two weeks we have done it uh, like uh, di-weekly in the past but um, some people just don't like meetings or organizing meetings that was the main bottleneck <laughs> here um, so we choose to do it less frequently, <laughs> and it's it's very similar to uh, what Mitch just uh, spoke about. It's uh, we have announcements from the board, from the state of the hackerspace. Um, it's also pos possible to organize votes, uh, although that does not happen very often. Uh, and people, of course, get get uh, some a minute or like whichever they need or what we deem long enough to talk about whatever they deem interesting so projects or introduce themselves if they are new ask for help um, if there are like large changes to the space that um, could affect multiple people then the people that uh, will be affected by this and have will have an opinion about this will just speak up and organize themselves into um, actually carrying out the change like like working groups or yeah like yeah. Li like working group yeah. we have recently or we are currently overhauling our, our workshop and that is that was proposed by i think three three of our members um and, and they did just the only thing they did was ask permission from the world and ask for some fun funding to arrange this. Because um, at Bitler we have a sort of meritocratic um, way of changing the space. The space itself is a project. And if people yeah, want to yeah. change the space, they can do so. If people don't like it or like the board does not like it, um, they could be asked to revert it. So if they are not willing to revert this change, then it's probably best they um, discuss about it in advance. This, this, this idea that the space is a project is something that I've also seen in, in, in all hacker spaces, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have the space and you want to do stuff with it. And <laughs> at home, I yeah. can't hang everything full of lead strips and I can do that at space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, my home is a kind of a hacker space. Uh, you're all welcome, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, um, after these uh, polyfloid, after these uh, working groups, do do they go back to the, the 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 meeting with all the members in order to actually like get get a mandate to to do these actions or? Are they allowed to do whatever gets decided on in the in the working group? Mm, no, they do not need a, ma a mandate from everyone else. Um, they can just if because uh, the the people that will have an opinion about this, well, uh, the people ab ab the people that have an opinion about whatever they are changing, will be part of this working group. Yeah. Um, mm. And this also saves saves time and frustration in like discussing things with people involved in a meeting yeah. that they may not really care about. Like the change to the workshop 
Um, as far as I, I'm aware, it feels very favorable by a lot of people, actually. Um, so, uh, yeah, the only real consensus to a change this large was from the board, but al that was also because it involved some, like, uh, fire hazards and safety and funds. Yeah. And irreversible changes. I think the the one minute is a is a very good uh, addition because it's, it's it sort of like sets a tone and people get to have one minute of space. Everybody gets the same to to share something or to to make an improvement to the space. I think in the beginning our meetings were very much decision focused. Like okay, we have these and these and these twenty points and we we all need to decide on them and the, all decisions have to be unanimous. So I remember one. Uh, Mm. One proposition I had, like, okay, I'm going, I want to have, I want to, we have these whiteboards, I want to buy some magnets for them, they're six euros, so we decide, we, we talked like 15 minutes on whether <laughs> this was a good idea or is this a valid thing for, for the funds or for the funds of the space and stuff like that. Well, if you would just like say like, okay, I have a minute and I could say like, okay, I need five euros for the magnets, who's with me? Give it, uh, drop a penny in the box and we'll, we'll buy them, I'll buy them. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a more better uh, way to to get stuff done because the unanimity, unanim unanimity, well, that everybody Whatever. agrees thing, <laughs> um, <laughs> that that's good. I think for very very crucial and essential things. But if you have members and this is their moment to shine to show them their 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 higher insights on this specific topic you're suggesting, mm -hmm. and they they also want to have their their space mm -hmm. and they want to want to realize themselves in that meeting by being very critical and, and oh, but it's all with the best intentions, then, then this does not work. And yeah. they, suck, they suck away all the energy and all the enthusiasm out of, of, out of an idea. It's so common, there's a phrase for it, it's called bike shedding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, what color should the bike shed be that I want to build? And then everyone <laughs> uh, talks about it and then no one does it because everyone's out of energy by the time you get to it. So um, <laughs> yeah, at, at Noisebridge very early, before we even had a space, we had a tradition where if we, anyone feels like that's starting to happen they yell out bike shedding and then everyone joins in it's like yeah yeah and if also veering off to a topic which is really interesting but is way off topic for the meeting uh we can yell rat hole the conversation is going down a rat hole yeah. as interesting as it is it's time to get back on focus that's a good idea as well to have keywords whereby you realize that you know you have to reboot you yeah. know reboot yeah. sure. <laughs> well that that's the the means i mean and uh in Aberdeen, we're really, in terms of our weekly meetings, it's just an open day, so there isn't any formality to it at all. We, it's all just, you come along and do whatever you want to do. So we don't have any of that one minute from the members. We don't have anything like that. And the only real meetings we have are, are based off of really critical aspects that the board needs to get together to do something because there's some aspect of either. Like we've had, we've had a, quite a few moves in, in space where we've been moving from one place to another. So those are very important decisions that need to be made and need to be put out to membership. So all, all things like that are generally done through the mailing list. Um, but most of the conversations with people is just you let people do things. That in the last time when we moved, we moved into a very bare space where we could do things. And um, in the meeting to do it, basically the other board members had put me forward as the person just to be in charge of setting up the new space um, but all that I did was I just says right there's the wiki all the areas are there if you want to do something write it on the wiki if nothing's written on the wiki for a part of the space do it yeah that sort of so it's like just basically do it, which actually it caused an issue with other well, another board member where where it was um, kind of the fact that he didn't feel like uh, he understood what was happening. Yeah. And I'm like, well, and the, the way I responded to him was saying, well, what I want to do in this space is I want to walk in and see something that I didn't even know existed, yeah. that I didn't even know was possible, and go, wow, that's amazing. I said, if we write up everything we're going to be doing, that'll never happen to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the, why the concept of duocracy exists. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you see yeah. something you want to do and you don't think people will object, just do it. Yeah. You don't need a formal process. Yeah. So especially if we, like with Noisebridge, and it sounds like from, from your experience as well, uh, unanimity, um, 
consensus mm. is a very slow formal process. So we don't want to have everything done that way. Uh, if you want to paint a mural on the wall and you think everyone will be fine with it, you just ask around and, and see, yeah, it seems like it'll be cool. You just do it. And, and like you said, too, you have to be willing to undo it if there are objections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, and, and the people who are objecting have to ha uh, be willing to help undo it as well. I yeah. not just leave <laughs> it, of course. Yeah, if somebody comes to me, can I do this in the space? And I say, sure. If, if it's going wrong, we, we, you have to f help fixing it. But do it, please. Or You're you welcome. have to do just it. apologize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's uh. important, too. <laughs> Well, I'll do that is in, in advance, actually, before I do something. Sorry, guys, but I have to do it. I have this urge, need to do something, you know. Like yeah, yeah but then you miss that you come into the space and somebody just decorated the column with LEDs. It happens to us. We came in and there was this thing and it was awesome. So we left it and it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that happens if you give people the, the room to do something without decision, which, well, you know, if, if it's wrong, we fix it in advance, but just do it. Just be safe. Mm -hmm. It was a, it kind of a little bit comes back to when I came in. You were talking about the kind of conflict resolution between people and things like this. It's like if you give, I I feel like if you give people that freedom to be able to take those steps themselves. But at the end of when they've done it, even if something's gone wrong, it's not a fact that they've done wrong. It's it's a fact that there might be an issue here where they need to have a little bit of negotiation with somebody. And if you t if you take them through that process, then next time they'll know. Like they learn from that process, they learn Hopefully. how to deal with people, they learn how to deal with those situations. So it's like, it's just an interpersonal learning process, just being able to give people the freedom to do that as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's this idea of um, when somebody makes mistakes, you should coach them mm. instead of punish them. Yes. Oh yeah, we have to make mistakes. You know, <laughs> yeah. encourage, it's not, a, it's not, you know, duocracy doesn't mean you have to be an expert to do it. You just do it. How yeah. are you going to learn if you don't do it? And uh, it, everything won't be perfect and wonderful, but, uh, but it's all wonderful because everyone's doing things. And, and another advantage of the, of the duocracy that we found is that when, when people come with an idea to a meeting, often the idea gets watered down and becomes like a compromise. Especially in Belgium, compromise seems to be our, our national export <laughs> product. But then, then you have the issue that the people doing it, they're actually less passionate about this compromise than they sure. were about the original idea. So if you just let them do their, their idea, then, then, then they will have so much more passion, so much more energy to put into it. And you'll see that a lot more stuff happens. And more people will help because there's a lot of cool energy there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a virus thing, you know. If you start <laughs> here, if we sh would be starting here, I don't know, doing what with the wall, but we immediately have people who would love to help you here. But of course, this is the nature of this game. Uh, yeah. It's uh, like even arriving at a camp or so, and, and people are around you like, what do you need? Where can I help? Can I get you something? It, it, it gives, you know, it, the, here is this energy of giving. And you start from that point. So if you start a hackerspace in as well, you have to start from that giving within an objective then. But you mentioned as well, an objective, you know. Yeah, vision, Therefore, I like, I like to work short term because I know the objective is clear, rules are clearly defined, and you operate. The longer term is, is far much harder. Yeah. I think, I think uh, the difference also is that um, we also started with like the yes, we can. Um, vibe, yes, yes, you can, yes, go ahead. Um, but then we found out that that common sense was not that common, and yeah. safety was not a, a shared uh, concept <laughs> no. between everybody involved. <laughs> and in the end, the board was responsible. You know, that's kind of hard, a difficult position to be in if you're being responsible for these things you cannot control. So I think the addition of that it has to be reversible. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like a great insight that has been gathered throughout the years. So, and of course, people will help reverse and will help fix it or whatever, or they will improve it. But um, this reversible part, also because yeah, you're dealing with a landlord and responsibilities mm -hmm. and all this boring mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. that nobody wants to deal with except for the board. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not not even the board. No, uh, no certainly not. not. <laughs> yeah, has to deal with. <laughs> has to deal with except for the board. That's uh, that's an interesting uh, side, and it also makes people reflect on like, okay, I can I can do stuff, I can go ahead, but I cannot break things. I cannot yeah. 
say like, okay, this is my wood workshop now, and this is like the second room I've turned into a wood, wood workshop. And of course it's full of sawdust. It's normal, it's a wood workshop. I've improved the space. So, um, yeah, so I think the, the undo, the, 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 undo the control button. Z button is, yeah. a, is a very nice addition <laughs> to, to, yeah. the, to the concept. Yeah, and that, that's like the, the throwing stuff away, for example, is one of the actions that is not revertible. And that's why yeah. like, you can't just let members throw away stuff without actually um, um, talking to the other members using a vortex of doom or, or another process. Have we found if you, as a board, and you think something is not as handy to do, and you explain people them, they understand it, and the next time they will take that into account. That's, that's mentoring people, and that is intensive, but you need it if you want to grow as a space. You tell people what you think about it, you tell them for example, a design pattern that's behind it, and that will help. Of course, sometimes you have to do that four times to people, and sometimes people get that when you just start talking. But y you can set rules. You can say from, yes, you did this, but this might be a problem, so we're not going to do that, without taking away their energy. But it takes some time, it takes some effort, and that's what part of the role of a board is, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, I really like the idea of but just... It, it's not something uh, limited to the board. I want to stress that. If there's another member who gets this, they will say that. And we want to have this possibility that it's not only the board. You know, yeah. the board are a few people who are there for legal reason and who feel slightly more responsible. But it's not the board who rules it and the members who come there. Yeah, I, I really like the idea of, of, of just saying how to do something better instead of actually making a rule and, and start policing those rules. Because like hackers are incredibly good at finding loopholes and stuff like that. And so when you have a system that, that is completely run by rules, mm, then you, yeah. you come mm. into this, this, this endless circle of like trying to create better rules, but, but failing to do that. Mm. Yeah, there's too many exceptions. And yeah, the, so at Noisebridge, we, we, we've always had just one rule. And then there's a lot of traditions that grew and um, processes that have been created that are constantly changing. But the one rule is just be excellent to each other, which is the signs you see all over Congress as we go around. And, um, you know, and that's the one hardcore rule. And, and everyone has to feel and be empowered in order to enforce that rule. Mm -hmm. And it's constantly talking about what is and what is not excellent that kept the culture alive and, and kept dogma from happening. So, um, and also to have common aspirations. The space, people in the space should also want to do things together and uh, meetings yeah. and tax should be a way for them to, to do that. Yeah, I uh, think just want to one very, very quickly thing. because we have to end. Last point. Um, so 10 years ago, um, we saw the hackerspace design patterns and basically what we learned there is go out and build your hackerspace. Now, yeah. like 10 years later, there's this hackerspace blueprint. I have not been part of the creation of this, but take the take the um, the um, the PowerPoint presentation, the, the slides from 10 years ago, and then read this manual, and then go out and build your own hackerspace. I think this should still be the, the message. The hackerspace is great. Go out and do it. You need four people to get started, and that's everything. Yeah. Find out what works for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's Thanks. the only way it's going to happen is if you do it. Hack the planet. Just do it, yeah. Thanks, everyone, right for coming on this podcast. It was very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, mm. thanks. Thank you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm.